gathering of Tazkiyah, purification, improvement. And in relation to that, the, the points that are in my mind I would like to present in your service, everything has a foundation. And that foundation is the most important factor. For example, uh, you, so you can understand this. We have a building and the building, its strength of that structure is based on its foundation, its root foundation. And however more strong the foundation is, the more that building will be strong. Doesn't matter how tall you then construct it, the, the height of it, everything will be based on the fact that its foundation is strong, robust. Yes, so if people who want to construct a tall building, heights, they focus on the foundation in the beginning, so there's no issue afterwards in the longer term future. And those buildings whose foundation is weak, is not strong, and on that weak foundation, on that weak basis, they start to construct and make and on that they'll make oh let's make it higher taller let's take it as tall as we can what's the consequence result a little bit of a, uh, a disaster takes place and the building it crumbles to the ground but the other building because its foundation is strong then it doesn't drop that quick it takes time So with this example, we realize and see and learn that foundation of everything is very important. Because in tasawwuf, this is also the case. In tasawwuf, there is also a foundation. In the subject of tasawwuf, there is also a foundation. And it's like the building example. The salik, the student, the traveler, the, the student of tazkiyah, the student of Tazkiyah, if his foundation is strong, then that student's status, he can take it to the height, as high as he wants. As high as he wants. He'll pass through and maintain himself through the strongest of tests and challenges. But you'll have also seen this. There are many people who have high status, high rank, maqamat. And people think, oh, this person's pious, upright, good. Oh, he's gone very, he's progressed in the silsila, in the order, but the foundation is weak. So a little bit of a disaster comes, or a bit of an issue arises in life, then darang, that building, it crumbles, and it comes back to the first maqam, first status, first lesson. Many people like this, many examples like this, I've seen many students like this, for years they've tried but this, even after 50 years, you can have the challenge. Even after 25 years, you can have this. And note this point. So as I said, requested that we all, uh, this is a gathering of Tezkiah. So in the angle, from the angle of Tezkiah, like our pious predecessors, what they have told us, listen carefully, you will benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, may he give us the tawfiq to hear the words of the pious predecessors. Very precious is when a pious elder speaks. Time passes and then after that a person, human being, he feels those words. Because myself, I don't have the habit of giving general speeches, lengthy debates. Yes, my, my focal point is Tazkiyah or Sunnat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's my focus. That's also Tazkiyah. The sawwuf, the most important branch of the sawwuf is 
is obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So as I was saying, that when we see the reason for this is that this person for years he was practicing, working hard. What's happened to him? All his maqamat have finished. What's the reason? The reason was that his foundation was weak and he couldn't look after himself. A little bit of a, a gust came, a test came, a challenge came. Remember this. Allah Ta'ala, He says, it's not easy to just walk into paradise, you've done tazkiyah, okay, let's go, we're free. Allah says, no, I test my servants on every turn of life. Big, big challenges come and tests come for a human being in his life. And in those tests and challenges, we, to succeed, we have to strengthen our foundation, our base. We need to make it strong, our foundation. So what is the foundation? Think, you think. What is the foundation that will make us strong, withstand through the life? What's the foundation of tasawwuf? My brothers, it's such a foundation. I will present a hadith to you. It's in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, this hadith. This hadith, look, Allah Ta'ala has spoken about the foundation that the most thing, the thing that I like the most, foundation, uh, in terms of the amal and what we do, is that on that foundation, all our deeds, Allah Ta'ala accepts our deeds based on this foundation. This is the most important factor. The thing that Allah Ta'ala likes, ahabba, Allah says, ahabba, Allah says, I love it. SubhanAllah. Most of all, most preferred, close to Allah. What is that? What is it? So that can that person fail? Who Allah Ta'ala says that I like that person, I love that person, I love that action. What is that factor? The hadith goes further and says. What is it? What is that factor? That always a person with regards to any amal should be steadfast and consistent, even if it's small. This is what Allah Ta'ala likes the most. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told us the best secret, the best, best secret. And this is a, a very important tool of tasawwuf. Successful is that person in tasawwuf and close to Allah. That deed is most beloved. That deed which has consistency, regularity, even if it is small in size, but it's ongoing, ongoing, doesn't cease. Istiqamat, steadfast. You'll be steadfast in that action. Allah likes that the most. Subhanallah. This is the reason those people who don't have consistency in their actions, their foundation is weak. This is the foundation of tasawwuf. The subject of tasawwuf, purification, always be steadfast in your actions. Regular, consistent. That amal, that deed that you're doing, don't leave it. Don't leave it. Be regular, consistent. Be observant, even if it's a small amount. But be steadfast on that. Even if it's a small amount, better to be steadfast. Here the Quran has also spoken, Wajadu Fina. Allah says, Allah Ta'ala has stated this that look, the foundation even of the sawwuf is on struggling and striving, making effort. Allah says that if you don't strive, if you strive, then Allah says, I'll open up all the paths of my ma'rifah. وَالَّذِينَ جَهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا Allah says that, I will help you. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ I says, always I'll assist you that challenge or test you get stuck in, in the life. Allah says, I'll take you out of that, that test. I won't let you drop. I won't let you fail. If you keep the foundation. What's the foundation? Allah explains that foundation. About, Allah says, hey, جَهَدُوا وَالَّذِينَ جَهَدُوا وَفِينَا so what do we think is striving? If you say do mujahida, strive, we say, oh, we think striving is uh, working extremely hard in just one thing, just for a small amount, doing, working as much as you want, and put yourself into hardship, and sweating, and toiling, and doing uh, amal for uh, intensely. We think that's jahadu, then we run back, say, oh, it's too hard for me. This is not mujahida. Mujahada, striving effort is consistency, ongoing regularity in the action. That's mujahida. This faqir says this, this humble servant says that Allah is mentioning here, jahadu, striving is that always do something ongoing, consistent, regular, without ceasing. Whoever does this mujahada, 
the amal he's doing, that it's ongoing and ongoing, and he doesn't go up and down, up and down, then alhamdulillah, Allah's guaranteed, I'll show you the path, I'll open the doors for you, and I'll assist you. SubhanAllah. In Bukhari it's been explained, and the Quran has also confirmed this, that success, the secret behind success is what? Is? Is to strive, mujahada. SubhanAllah. And what is mujahada? Striving always to do the deed, always ongoing, regular. Do an amal, do it amal, ongoing, even if it's small in scale or size. Here, another point, please listen. Please listen. Do, do, if you understand all of this, now this is not the reason here that, um, so we shouldn't use this. For example, if we do so much amal, we'll be successful, or he's got more lessons than me, or less, and why is the difference? No, whatever the shaykh is prescribing to you, what is coming from the shaykh he's assigning to you. And if he tells you do this quantity, on this regularity, on this intervals, that's it. Then you need to be steadfast on that, ongoing, that's all you're successful. You will succeed. Don't look at others. Oh, he's got this much. He's been told to do this many thousand. And I've only been told he's doing 10,000. I'm doing less. He'll go beyond me and above me. Totally not. Yes. The sheikh knows. The teacher knows that the path he's prescribing, he's prescribing to that student and he's prescribing to you as well. But how, in which way, which manner, which style, how much to do, quantity, what's his capacity, what he doesn't have, what you have, etc. This differs. Don't compare. Don't think. Don't analyze. That's why that he says, even if it's smaller in quantity, but be regular and steadfast in your deeds. Don't run around comparing. Everyone should have the same lesson, same quantity. I've only got two lessons. He's gone beyond me. He'll be more pious. No. The person who's steadfast, mashallah, who is regular. Sheikh has told you, do this 1,000. 1,000 for you. If you're steadfast on that, you maintain that. Alhamdulillah, you've succeeded. So that which you have, the prescription that's written for you, that this is the sabak for you, these are the lessons for you, do more on this, do less on this. If you do this ongoing, ongoing, and totally you don't deviate from that, and you don't break that consistency, and here's where a person fails. He gets excited, long tasbih sessions. He'll say to the shaykh, give me more, give me more. That's why I stated, this is against adab, against the adab manners to ask from the shaykh, can I do this as well? Can I do these deeds as well? Can I keep these fast? Can I do these nawafil actions? Can I do some more extra dhikr? This is nafs of nafs. How can you request if your shaykh is prescribing to you what's best for you? Why do you want to go over and, above, beyond, uh, over and beyond that? Then that means you are subservient to the nafs. You are, you are following the track of desires. You have become biadab. Disrespectful. Pious predecessors in the Naqshbandi Silsil I'm referring to, they've stated, you have no need to ask for more and more and more. He knows what he should give to you. He knows. So you stay consistent on what you've been prescribed and continue here, especially the women folk. The women folk, they get pinched, they feel the pinch. Oh, my spark are less, my lessons are less. He's only giving me this many this be. And other men, they do this, and they do this much quantity and extra. Subhanallah, the mashayikh of the Naqshbandi Tariqah, from there where the silsila has come, and the asbaq that have been prescribed and taught and disseminated. Women folk, when the sheikh gives the lesson, Yes, even if it's less in tasbih quantity, but you need to be regular, consistent. There's a big difference between women and men. They can't do that mujahada, that quantity, the amount. They can't do that maybe quantity. Yes, they can't be ongoing, maintain that. Why? Because their direction of life is different. Bringing up the children, making food, this action, this task, that task. And also with the hardship, Allah Ta'ala has made the, the physical capacity of the female cannot bear that, that much burden physically. Yes, but it's nothing to be afraid about or complain. You will also get the nearness to Allah in the same exact way, just like other people who do extra dhikr or extra striving. You don't need to have concern or worry. It's very good that if you've got less quantity and you get the same maqam, same levels that Allah has given to other people, then there's no difference in the level. The Quran has said, Men, women, and the women folk who do dhikr and the men who do dhikr, both have been mentioned in the Quran. Allah has mentioned, uh, yes, that paradise is meant for both. Equality. 
Allah Ta'ala has made Jannah for them. Allah said in the Quran, both have been mentioned by name, the men folk who do dhikr and the women folk who do dhikr. The men who do dhikr kathir and the women who do dhikr kathir. What is kathir? Kathir, high quantity, is the amount you've been prescribed. If you're regular on that, then that's kathir. That's kathir. Subhanal. It's not hard tasawuf. We make it hard ourselves. Mashaik Akram, the respected Mashaik, they take the students with ease, and especially Nakshbandi Sisla, our Hazrat, he was very halim and gentle, and this silsila is a very loving silsila, caring silsila. They don't put the student into hardship. Yes, and we're living in that generation now. We don't have time and to work hard and do mujahid, that lengthy, lengthy stuff. What do we do? We don't worry about long term. We worry about Hubbal Amal. Allah says the Amal, the deed I love the most is not the high quantity physically. It's even if it's smaller in quantity, but long term. So especially for the women folk, if your sheikh has prescribed you a few tasbihs to read, if you're regular in that, how long? Until, until, as long as, Death doesn't come to you. Don't leave the tasbihs prescribed to Alhamdulillah. All of your uh, factors will, will thrive. You say, oh, I don't have enough tasbih. They do that much dhikr, more dhikr. Yes, that don't compare and analyze. Just be consistent and regular in what you have been given. Be steadfast. So also this point to understand today is that the, the Allah Ta'ala has given you guidance. You've been given some lessons. Your shaykh has with the permission of Allah, giving you a lesson, consider it as a treasure. And the Quran is defined, this is Mujda in the Hadith, Abu Amal, the best of these, like by Allah, is on this basis. What is that? The deed that's done regular, steadfast, ongoing. Even if it's small in scale and size. And that's the biggest test. So all the tests have come in life by a person, should always go on the line and focus on steadfast. Great rewards for this. There are great events of the pious elders, pious predecessors, um, one of our Imams Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi when he was imprisoned Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal on the Masail of the Quran they sent him to jail severe hardship in jail there was a prisoner he said huh? Molana, uh, you are a pious upright person there's no light on your face where have you come to with us in the jail in the jail what are you doing with us in prison oh Imam he said yes you are right He said, what was the masla, the challenge? The, the, the prisoner asked. He said, that we're thieves and bandits here, and you pious, upright, honest person. He said, the situation was this, that the king of the time, I didn't listen to what he said wrong with some point, and uh, he was using the Quran incorrectly, and I didn't accept what he was saying. And uh, that's, why, that's why. So he sent me to jail. Then the prisoner looked at him, and he, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal says, Subhanallah, that he was a thief, a bandit, but his nasiha gave me encouragement, his nasiha, his advice of the prisoner. His nasiha gave me such that in the jail he gave me encouragement. Subhanallah. Yes, with his nasiha. The prisoner, what was the nasiha? He said, Mawlana, Imam Sahib, look, I'm a thief, I'm a, I'm a bandit, I'm a robber. I was steadfast on robbery, steadfast, ongoing. I leave jail, steal again, leave jail, steal again. Then I come to prison again. And you are on a pious line. And remember one thing, never ever leave istikamat. Be firm on what you're doing. Steadfast. Where you are, the point you stuck on, stick to that. The, the thief is giving a seer to Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahmatullah, and he's praising him after coming out of prison until today. We also are mentioning that thief because he had istikamat, he was steadfast. Allah says, the habba al-amali, maybe he was wrong action. But Allah loves that action of steadfastness. But he gave a great nasiha. So how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a person a message, we, the wazifas we get, the shaykh prescribes, do this much dhikr, do this much dhikr, and we even put that to the side. Sultan Nuruddin, rahmatullah alayhi, very pious, upright individual he was. And he made a habit in life, and his sheikh must have told him, obviously somehow he came onto this practice. He had a habit that 1,000, every day before sleeping, the Rood Sharif he would send to the Holy Prophet wasallam to the blessed court. And he became habitual in this life. For example, if you become habitual, 1,000 dhikr, I'm going to do 2,000, 2,000 of this. Then inshallah, the doors of Nur start to open. Regular, steadfast. So he was regular, habitual. And once he was very tired, 
very tired and due to tiredness it was hard for him and uh, instead of 1,700 he recited he went to sleep he, he felt drowsy he went to sleep and as soon as he fell sleepy the Holy Prophet Sallallahu came to him in his dream and said uh, Sultan uh, you surprising 700 you recited I was waiting for the other 300 when will you send the balance of 300 subhanallah this is the result of istiqamat regularity suddenly he sat up he cried he said subhanallah amazing istiqamat what a brilliant point so my brothers it's not the case the person has shown these miracles and then he gets his come no the examples are there that when you start doing a deed with steadfastness alhamdulillah allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi are very happy with that person and subhanallah the those the 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 deeds are presented to the holy courts and the rewards come and the person if he's regular and steadfast the amal will come the deeds the rewards will come Subhanallah. And if you have a habit, you will complete that, then you will sleep, then my day will end, then I'll go to sleep. Subhanallah. But it doesn't matter how tired I am, so much I've got to do, but I'm going to be regular in these actions. Not that was I if the shaykh's given to you. Any action the shaykh's given to you, that becomes your wazifa. That becomes your lesson. Any task shaykh assigns to you, your teacher, that becomes your wazifa. That's a karam. His grace and his generosity. Every action that comes to you from the shaykh, that is all lillah, is from Allah, it takes you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, even if he says to a murid, go and buy shopping for me every day. Yeah, and he's bringing the shopping, the student, or the shaykh says to the student, uh, bring the vessel full of water to me. And he brings the vessel full of water, like in our countries. Uh, he said that, uh, go to the well, he's filling up the vessel and bring it from here. And the shaykh says to the student, you know this uh, uh, clay pot? Yes, we always put water in this every day and give it for me. That's a wazifa. It's a task because the shaykh, the kamil shaykh, whatever task he gives to the student is lillahi. For the sake of Allah, not for a personal gain, will take him to Allah that task. That's what the student should consider. Khalis. Simply, my shaykh is explaining this to me. This is my ibadah. And from this, this is my dhikr. This is my remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will give him that reward. So was I for there, you know, recitation, prayer, etc. But if the shaykh says, do this task, do this, you have to do this, A, B, C. If the shaykh has said that to, to Marie, to the student, so much barakah, blessing in tasawwuf and such a connection and relationship between the shaykh and the murid, the student, the shaykh, however he guides, which way he guides to Allah, lillayat. For the sake of say subhanallah, subhanallah. This is tasawwuf. My brothers, the pious predecessors have, have told us in detail, detail. Yes, it's not some innovation, it's not some made up thing, a few points, no. Complete. And this all becomes wazifa, whatever the shaykh says. Whatever the shaykh says, that this is your duty, task, assignment, that's it. That's it. And if you are regular, consistent, you quietly do it. Your test nafs will come, shaitan, wasawis, evil thoughts. Then a person fails when his foundation is weak. Here's the point of foundation. He's not consistent, step fast. Was, was, will come, start to feel tired and press for time. He'll make some comments. I don't know, I get tired, I've been told to do this. Oh, that's it. And then he stops. Fail. Fail. He fails that individual. That's why very few saliks graduate, you could say at the end of the day with success. It's not just tasbih. All life long you have to do for Allah's sake. Not just for a second. Every second you have to give to Allah encouragement, determination, persevere. Always remember, inna Allah, Allah says, inna, wa inna Allah If you keep your foundation strong, whatever you get assigned, you are regular, steadfast, maintain it. And with happiness you're doing it, with sincerity Allah Ta'ala promises. Allah says, wa inna Allah al muhsinin Allah says that, behold Allah is indeed with the doers of good until they go into paradise. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He give us success in this path. These are small points, minor points, but they are foundation, strong, fantastic points. We don't give importance to these points, to these factors. And if we see, if we see, uh, I used to think that um, every person thinks according to his own way and method and... Um, that I, what can I give uh, for, for regularity, consistency to these people? And I used to stay concerned and ponder over this, my murid, my students, so they can become 
um, um, steadfast because I knew this is the foundation without that we can't succeed and they sort of leave it, do a bit and leave a bit sometimes lazy, negligent, all factors, reasons so I used to have a lot of concern I used to do dua to Allah subhanahu Allah's karam Allah's generosity this point Allah Ta'ala instilled into my heart what was that point? the, the sheet system look how did the sheet system come about I'm telling you I'm telling you in Manchester Khan Ka uh, you'll be surprised after analyzing, thinking, and look how our situation has developed to this point today. When the niya is correct, Allah Ta'ala takes you from your small little finger and He walks you along. My dua was that whoever's taking my hand, Allah, I don't want them to slip and fall down and fail. I want them to succeed to then so that I can also be says, well, I don't know what will be my hal. That with someone's assistance help, I can get forgiven as well, hopefully. Yes, if that person, my student, he succeeds, he'll do dua for me. And he'll say, okay, let's do dua for the teacher as well. Obviously, everyone's thinking about himself. So I was concerned and uh, all, every man and every woman who has taken the guidance. So Allah Ta'ala put into my heart a great system and such a factor, the Shi system, the Shi analysis system, guaranteed it makes a person steadfast. And the miracle of this, the greatness of the Shi system, is Allah says that how this individual, whatever he is, but if he starts the sheet system analysis of deeds and he's doing it somehow or other, he's got istikamat on the sheet system, he's following it and he doesn't um, sort of on time, he's submitting even if there are crosses on it, ups and downs, he's weak, he's fragile, alhamdulillah. Allah has made it. Someone says, you keep on sticking to it. If you're regular in doing it, you keep on tracking it, submitting it, I will give you success. That's the sheet system. But sad to say, he said, how many women folk and men folk, our colleagues, especially women folk are lazy. They don't give importance to this system. I'm telling you this today, this is from Allah. So I said, how can I make this system? Think about this system, where this system started and where it's arrived today, developed to. Look, alhamdulillah. A friend, uh, for example, a person gives an idea or things, ideas come in mind, you implement, implement, improve, improve it, develop it, ask Allah for help always to make things easier and more simple and more people get become successful, alhamdulillah. And I say, my colleagues who are doing the work, they also, mashallah, alhamdulillah, they continue, do it, sit steadfast, really don't make a fuss, this is their wazifa. Immediately, mashallah, and they're working, they've got careers, there's a team, mashallah, very good work they do, technically. So this is a tariqah to attain Allah, great way. So the Shi system, there's regularity in this, and there's severe consistency and steadfastness, and this is a proof, whoever follows the Shi system, even is weak, is said, oh, can't do it, it's too hard. Look, little bit here. Especially the ulama ikram, the respected scholars, they don't pay regard to this, but alhamdulillah, muftis, and such good people, ulama, such good people, they, they submit their sheets. And they're taking it seriously. Alhamdulillah, the Quran guarantees that for those people, Allah says, I am with the doers of good. Yes, for this, some people say, oh, what's this sheet for me? I don't lie, I pray so I anyway already. And it looks like a small thing. Many respected scholars have seen them. They don't look, they don't take importance on the system. Oh, I don't have time for this. I have to teach in the class. I have to teach hadith class. My brothers, you, if you become, if you're a patient yourself, how will you teach people? A patient. If he's a patient, how will he give the, the medicine to the sick person? He's a patient himself. So all my kram, respected scholars need to work harder, harder, so that their speeches are correct, their teachings correct, their work of tabliqs correct. Yes, tabliq, for tabliq to propagate the deen, they are in extreme need for purification and cleanliness. Tazkiyah. So we need to reform our foundation. Alhamdulillah, we have a great jama'ah of ulama ikram, respected scholars. MashaAllah, they are khatibs, speakers, imams, MashaAllah, muhaddithin, hadith scholars, hadith teachers, and educated scholars. MashaAllah, they're doing the work of the deen. They have crushed their desires. Yes, they've accepted this, they accepted that this is my shaykh, and he will take me to... They accept the system. And they're working hard, they strive, they submit the sheets. So brothers, the sheet system is fantastic, magnificent, and gives you free of charge guarantee as long as you keep submitting it. Do it properly. Yes, doesn't matter how it is up and down, whatever negatives, submit the sheets. 
Anyway, Alhamdulillah, do dua to Allah. Allah gives us understanding. In this life of a few days, my friends, this is the generation of fitna. We don't know where the dunya is going from here to there, tomorrow. What will be a hal? Nobody knows. No guarantees. Such sicknesses will come. People start to die. Masjids will close. And this halat conditions will come. Did we know? Yes. And we're just so enjoying ourselves, running around, enjoying and trapped in the corners of the world. We don't know how in the dunya there's a, like a, there's a, a massive issue that's going around. And how, and where the dunya, how it's progressing at the moment, what's going on, we don't know. People are just running around, enjoying themselves. Like, really, now we need to focus and be at, uh, attentive and think. But we don't know dunya, 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 money, houses, bungalows, this, out, everything, just running around like blind. We don't know this time we need to do istighfar, dhikr kathir, we should be doing tawbah, repenting more in this age, era. Yes, the time passes, flies past. Look what's happening around the world. Where have all these things come from? Adhab of Allah that has come. It's a, it's a storm. It's the time of Dajjal. Mahdi alayhi salam's generation is coming. The call is coming. You can see like the vibration. Vibration. Yeah, it's there, and all of the the statements regards to the Akhra, the Jal, all of the 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 signs. Look at Kaaba Sharif at this moment in time, Haramain Sharif. What's the condition? Everything in the world's changed, but we're running around blindly in the dunya. We have no concern, no worries. Four plus four, two plus two, three and three. Count this and enjoy and drown in the dunya. Uh, yes, when Azab came to the previous nations, it would solve their crisis. You know, we say that Azab, all these signs that have come to us. Yes, it's more than a year, the signs are still there. It's more than a year now. All our world is shaking and afraid. Yes, because Allah's azab is a sign that something big is about to come very close. And this will change the map of everything around us. But yes, we don't have care. What's this? No, no, make houses, shops and assets and money and enjoy life and no desire for thee, no fear, no nothing. The day that the, the, the focus and direction has changed. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. And everything has been gathered together and comes towards we need to do istighfar and true tawbah and repentance. This is the maqam of tawbah that we have come to now. Remember this. It's the era, the time for tawbah. Look at your amal, your hisab, your deeds. Have khawf of Allah. Create fear and khawf. Be afraid. Think, the Arab of Allah is around us. What's about to happen? We don't know. The signs have come. Big, big times are about to come. May Allah Ta'ala protect us all. So we should work hard, focus, do amal on these words. May Allah Ta'ala give me the tawfiq to practice on this. And all you also, wa akhru dawana, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسولنا محمد شفيع المسلمين توحيد ياسين الحبيب الامين اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد نبينا وسيدنا وسواسي ومحاتم المؤمنين وزرياتي واهل بيتي كما صليت على ال ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد سلم تسلما دائما ابدا كثيرا كثيرا اللهم رب العالمين في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة يسنة وكنا عزاب وكنا عزاب القبر وكنا عزاب الحشر وكنا عزاب الميزان وتخلنا جنة عمال بلا جازي سيا غفار يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين اللهم النصر وكل لف ولا في الله فاطر في الدين ودنيا وعهد وعهد اللهم حسنا غبتنا في أمور كلها وجنة من خص الدنيا وزاب اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا والآخرة اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا والآخرة اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا والآخرة اللهم عافنا في صني اللهم عافنا في بصري اللهم عافنا في بصري لا إله إلا أنت يا يا حي يا قيوم إذا ما فيك نقيس ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا وقتانا ربنا ولا تحفنا لإن اسم كما حملته من الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تقتلنا به وافهمنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم القابلين فانصرنا على القوم القابلين اللهم نسلك حسن الخاتمة 
اللهم نسلوك حسن خاتمة اللهم نسلوك حسن خاتمة يا رحم الرحيم 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 اللهم نسلوك طوبة النسوب قبل الموت اللهم نسلوك طوبة النسوب قبل الموت اللهم نسلوك طوبة النسوب قبل الموت يا رحم الرحيم يا رحم الرحيم يا رحم الرحيم اللهم مقلب قلوبنا ثبت قلبي إلى دينك اللهم مقلب قلوبنا ثبت قلبي إلى دينك اللهم مقلب قلوبنا ثبت قلبي إلى دينك يا رحم الرحيم يا رحم الرحيم اللهم بارك في الموت وفيما بعد الموت اللهم حاسب حسابا يسيرا اللهم حاسب حسابا يسيرا اللهم حاسب حسابا يسيرا اللهم عينا على أغمرات الموت والسكرات الموت اللهم نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وعذاب زحل فتنة المحي والمعاطة فتنة المسيح التجار يا رحم الرحيم يا كرمة الوالد يا فضلة الوالد هماري بنا هم قمعة في الماضي اللهم تبكي بكشش في الماضي يا الله تمام صغيرة وكبيرة دانشتا غير دانشتا من الملاجة حسي بنا هو قرين تفر فرما رحم فرما آج بخشش کا دن ہے میرے مولا بخشش کی رات ہے تو کرم فرماتا ہے آج نظر کرم فرما دے میرے مولا ہم سب کو معاف فرما دے ہمارے گناہوں کو معاف جو گناہ بھی زبان سے کیے ہاتھ سے کیے نگاہ سے کیے جسم سے کیے میرے مولا دل سے کیے تمام گناہوں کو معاف فرما دے کون جو تیرے سے معاف کر سکتا ہے میرے مولا تو ہی مالک ہے تو ہی خالق ہے تو ہی قادر ہے یا اللہ تو ہی معاف کر سکتا ہے میرے مولا اور کوئی دے کرنے والا نہیں میرے یا اللہ کوئی اور معاف کرنے والا نہیں کرم فرما دے یا کریم یا اللہ ہمیں دوزت کے عذابوں سے بچا قبر کے عذابوں سے بچا یا اللہ حشر کے میدان کی سختیوں سے بچا یا اللہ پرسلات سے بچا یا اللہ ہمیں بے حساب جنت میں داخل فرما یا کریم ہمیں بے حساب جنت میں داخل فرما یا اللہ ہمیں نفس اور شیطان سے بچا تمام فتن سے بچا یا اللہ اس کو تمام دنیا فتن میں مقبلہ ہے میرے مولا ہمیں معلوم نہیں کر ہمارا کیا انجام ہو میرے مولا سخت تجھی سے مدد طلب کرتے ہیں میرے مولا تمام و خیر خوبیاں اور برکتیں بتا فرما جو تجھ سے تمام خیر خوبیاں وہ مانگتے ہیں میرے مولا جو تجھ سے تمام نیک لوگوں نے مانگی انبیاء نے مانگی سہلین نے مانگی صحاب نے مانگی میرے مولا اور ساری ہمیں عطا فرما یا اللہ تمام برائیوں سے فتنوں سے یا ہمیں تمام مصیبتوں سے ہم پناہ مانگتے ہیں تمام وہ پناہ مانگتے ہیں جن لوگوں نے میرے مولا نیک لوگوں نے صحابہ نے اولیاء اللہ نے انبیاء نے تجھ سے مانگی میرا مولا ہمیں عطا فرما یا رحم الرحیم یا رحم الرحیم اپنی رحمت سے آج اللہ اپنی رحمت کی چادر میں ہمیں ڈھانپ لے میرے مولا ہمارے پاس پڑھ لے کچھ بھی نہیں میرے سارے اعمال ریا کے ساتھ ہیں دنیا کے ساتھ ہیں میرے مولا ہمارے سارے اعمال بیکار ہیں میرے مولا تو فضل فرما دے یا اللہ فضل فرما کرم فرما دے یا اللہ جو بیمار ان کو شفا عطا فرما یا اللہ اس بیماری سے شفا عطا فرما یا اللہ جو ہمارے حلقے میں عورتیں اور مرد بیمار ہیں جنہوں نے دعا کیے کہا یا کریں ان پر صحت کا عمل آج رہا نصیب فرما دیں میرے مولا یا اللہ ہم سب کو شہد کے قافلہ آج رہا نصیب فرما دیں میرے مولا تمام مصیبتوں سے بچا پریشانیوں سے بچا یا اللہ تمام بیماریوں سے بچا یا رحم رحم ہاتھ پڑھائے تو سے مانگتے ہیں یا اللہ ہمارے پیارے جو ہمیں چھوڑ کے تیرے پاس پہنچ چکے مولا آج میں منتظر ہوں گے قبروں میں کون ہے جو ہمیں حدیعہ بھیجتا ہے میرے مولا یا اللہ آج کی رات کے تمام اعمال جو ہمیں کیے میرے مولا تمام اپنے پیاروں کو جا چکے ہیں ہمارے پاس سے تیرے پاس میرے مولا ہمارے روحانی رشتے والے ہمارے جسمانی رشتے والے یا اللہ ہمارے تعلق سلسلے سے رکھنے والے تمام حضرات کو ہمارے یہ حدیعہ پہنچا دے میرے مولا یا اللہ ان کی قبروں کو روشن فرما دے ان کی بخشش فرما دے یا اللہ جو سلسلے سے جڑے ہیں میرے مولا ان کی رحمتیں نازل فرما ان کو کامیابی نصیب فرما جو اس سلسلے میں اخلاص کے ساتھ جڑے ہیں میرے مولا صدق دل کے ساتھ انہوں نے یقین کے ساتھ یا اللہ اس صدق سلسلے کو پکڑا ہوا ہے میرے مولا اس نقش چندنی سلسلے میں ان کو حشر فرما میرے مولا یا اللہ شیطان و صافی سے بچا کے رکھ میرے مولا نفس سے بچا کے رکھ جب تک موت نہ آئے یقین نہیں ہے ہمیں میرے مولا بس تو ہی اکرم کرنے مولا اس سلسلے کے ساتھ ہی ہمیں چلنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ ہم ان لوگوں میں شامل نہ فرمانا جو پیچھے ہٹ گئے منہ موڑ کے پھر اسی راستے پہ چلے گئے میرے مولا یا اللہ ان سے ہمیں بچا دینا ہے مولا یا اللہ ہم پہ ایسا ضام نہ ڈالنا کہ ہم 
پھر الٹے پاؤں پیچھے اسی حالت پہ چلے جائیں میرے مولا یا اللہ کی استقامت کے ساتھ چلنے دے ہمیں یا اللہ جو آج ہمیں خوبصورت باتیں دے اللہ تیرے فضل و تیرے کم سے پہنچی ہیں میرے مولا ہمیں وہ یا اللہ ہمیش کی عطا فرما دے اپنے مال کے اوپر یا میرے مولا ہمیں یقین عطا فرما دے ہمیں محبت عطا فرما اپنے سلسلے سے اپنے مشائق سے میرے مولا یا رحم الرحمین یا رحم الرحمین اپنے حبیب کے صدقے سے میرے مولا تمام اہل بیت کے صدقے سے یا اللہ تو ہماری دعاؤں کو قبول فرمائے یا کریم سبحان ربی کو رب العزت یا مائسے ہوں سلام علیہ وسلم و الحمد للہ رب العالمین